bubble lettering. It's a massive pain in the ass to learn how to do, but it is also probably one of the most fun, especially when you get the satisfaction of knowing you figured out how in the hell to do it. Well, today we are taking the block lettering that we learned in the last couple of weeks, and we're gonna round those corners off and make it kind of look kind of smooth and long and rounded like a sausage. Basic bubble lettering, kind of the foundation. If the block lettering is like the very, very foundation, this is like the subfloor before you put the laminate on. And I just bought a house and this is coming out in how I am talking about this lettering. If you haven't yet, I would suggest you go back a couple of weeks. I'll link it up above in the ethos and down below. It is the episode where I talk about capital block lettering because today we're going to take that and we're going to build on it and do capital bubble lettering that's not puffy, just generic ass bubble lettering. And so everything that we talked about in that video, it's going to come in handy for this new one. That opens up the doors to doing all sorts of other epic ass shit with bubble lettering that we'll talk about in later videos. So instead of letting me ramble this whole fucking time, give this video a big thumbs up. That's not a thumbs up, this is a thumbs up. And let's get into it. I have traced very lightly an alphabet here for me to trace around, demonstrate this style of bubble lettering to set myself up for the best possible success. This is not a style that I am great at. I tend to make my bubble letters a lot more puffy and exaggerated. I've done that so often that it's become very difficult for me to keep the consistent spacing that is a good learning block. Like I've moved past, I moved to a different style so much that it's harder for me to do this old style. I'm gonna practice it more this, the next couple months to get the hang of it again before the end of the year, but that's just a heads up. So if you wanna do that, make sure when you draw out your alphabet to trace around, don't just do it like a regular, make it bigger, that there'll be enough space to trace around it rather than it being super tight and hard to get good detail. So we'll start with A. And when you're learning how to do this tracing and everything else, don't start at a corner. You're gonna be rounding the corners off. And so if you start at a corner, it's naturally going to be more pointy and that's what you want to avoid. Now notice I just go right over the top and then I meet up with the, the original line. You can make this top part flatter if you want to. I usually don't in this style, but you can. And then when you do the inside again, just round it off. Now I do leave sometimes these little points, but I try and at least soften them a little bit. That's personal preference. This is all personal preference. But like here, I'm starting in the middle of the top rather than rather than somewhere right at a corner because then the corner becomes more pronounced. And fair and warning, I really hate this style of bee. I hate bubble letter bees in general. They just tend to be awkward looking for me. It's a hit and miss whether or not I get a good looking one, which just pisses me off because I don't like that. Now for C, just pick a starting point, follow it around and just think round where you had to find corners before, now you're rounding them off to make them look like, kind of like the, you know, the skinny balloon animals that you get at the carnival. Like, think about that. Like, these are not fat, puffy balloons. These are skinny, like, turn into a wiener dog looking balloons. You just remember to start in the middle and round your corners off as best as you can so that you can keep that nice, soft look to it. Kind of like a sausage or a worm. I guess if you put little eyeballs, that could be a little earthworm, you know? Think about it in terms of that. Now, again, as with the block letters that we did before, another trick you wanna keep is trying to make sure that the spacing in your letters is consistent. Now notice this bottom part of the E curved up because that was how I had written it out and I'm just sort of following it. But however you want to do it, you do it. And the E that I did on the worksheets doesn't look exactly like this. But notice that this this length right here and this length right here are about the same as much as like this length is, like these two lengths are the same. You don't have to keep your letter the perfect amount every time you do it, but when you have them in a word, unless you're trying to make it look a little bit off, you want to make sure that that kind of spacing is consistent, not just in different parts of each letter, but from letter to letter. Now see here, this one is not quite as soft. If it was a little bit softer, it would feel a little bit more consistent. It just takes practice. Obviously I need some more of that with these. Now when you're doing the G, this is where it can get difficult. Curve it around and then see how I'm just sort of curving it rather than making a corner there? How I just sort of softened my way out of it right here. 
that that area that's what you want to look for in all of these corners now with H because H has a lot of places where you have the corners notice that I'm just rounding it like it's a nice soft these are still defined they're not like here you can see that I did not get this width consistent with this width and it makes it look a little bit awkward you want to make sure that this area here to this area are even and same on this side if these do not even up with each other then it looks super janky you also see the same thing with the eye you want to make sure not only that you're keeping everything nice and even but that this area here and this area here line up with each other you also can see that on this oh you can't see now because i covered it up but i also was not quite so soft with those curves again it's just practice you're thinking soft 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 with the j soft 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 curving around and it's really easy with curvy letters like j to like fatten up one of these parts you just want to practice keeping them nice and even with each other now with k the k pants from the, uh, the block letter is still in effect you just want to kind of soften it and notice here i didn't even make it that pronounced i just sort of curved around it which is fine and i didn't but as long as this looks like it's one even line like that looks even this looks even you know, you imagine it in like pieces, pieces of balloon, pieces of sausage, and making sure that those pieces all line up correctly. And you'll start to get the hang of it. And these softened lines really can start opening up a world where you can do like balloon letters and all sorts of fun things. The trick is to really get the hang of doing it all in one smooth stroke, not drawing piece by piece. Drawing piece by piece works really well when you are doing like, see I fucked up on that, but you get the hang of like making sure they meet. Also, you can just kind of go over it. This would be a great place for a drop shadow, but that is another video. When you're doing the pointy edges, the pointy lines, let's see with the O here, I'm just trying to keep it nice and even. I keep interrupting myself and that's just, I interrupt everybody. It's kind of how I live my life. When you're drawing with the hard corners in like a block letter, doing it piece by piece works really well because you have well-defined edges, well-defined places to stop. But when you're doing a rounded off style like this, it really is helpful if you just get the practice of doing it in one smooth motion. Now see the outside of the Q is generally okay. It's kind of like a nipple, but when you get to the inside, you want to keep consistent. And then when you hit about the same spot, just curve it up and around. And you'll start to see, kind of looks like a little Pac-Man, doesn't it? That's this right here is where it really benefits tracing around an original letter. Just make sure that you're practicing the one smooth motion of it, even if you're corners aren't exact even if you're you're kind of proportionately still not getting the hang of it getting the feeling of the motion is the most important thing here because that motion will carry you through to any other kind of bubble lettering doing these curves is one of the ways to get the muscle memory of how tracing around a letter feels like because you're not stopping you're just making it the same as you would make any other letter it's just it becomes natural to you so you want to just find your starting point, get going, and don't stop. And if you catch yourself having to stop, that's when you might run into trouble with overlapping lines and such. Now see here, these are even. That takes practice. Curving around for the U. Just trying to stay as consistent as possible in terms of size that looks super notice here how if i had stayed consistent this would have lined up perfectly but instead it looks kind of lumpy or if you ever read charlie in the great glass elevator kind of like a vermicious canid hashtag vermicious canid maybe if you've read that book anybody besides me remember those whack-ass illustrations they could creep the fuck out of me when i was a kid now with a w you see how i'm just sort of it's almost like a roller coaster rather than a rather than like straight up and down lines it's just like woo. that's the motion you're trying to get the hang of x can be one of the hardest ones so this is one where you want to kind of find a middle point to start and just sort of go 
follow it around trying to keep the same distance if you can keep the same distance not only from each other but from the center point of your skeleton that helps you keep the x looking even so you just want to make sure that you're sort of each of these stop points is as the same distance from the center it feels like geography but like this distance and this distance those distances and if you want to draw your skeleton out and then draw a faint little plus sign in the middle to give you a spot to kind of scoop to and it'll help you get used to it now why shouldn't be that difficult once you've gotten the hang of the other letters same with z actually z as long as you're following and just sort of curving around it may not look perfect but you'll start to get the hang of the motion of making the z which is the most important thing to do we're going to talk about overlapping in a separate video but when you draw out your letters make sure if you're using a skeleton to get you there i'm going to use this pink again to demonstrate as a whoops to demonstrate as a pencil let's say that you want to write the word bubble since that's what this is now if you're writing bubble like this and you try and trace around it everything's going to be all mishmash and even if you're trying to overlap it's still going to be hard to read so you just want to make sure that you leave enough space in between each letter to trace now this comes a little bit with time just try and make sure that the space in between each letter is fairly similar like it doesn't have to be perfect but it just needs to be well, I keep throwing things it just needs to be enough kind of even so that you have enough room to trace your letter and then you just start tracing your letters around it Remembering again, smooth strokes, smooth strokes. Keeping everything consistent, trying to avoid harsh corners. Smooth stroking. I guess I am demonstrating this, huh? My bees, fucking bubble has three bees in it and I'm just not a fan of them, but what as? I hear a train and I'm so sorry about that but it is hot and I'm trying to get some air in here but now you see by tracing that the bubble letters look actually even spaced to each other if I tried to trace here I'm just gonna be sloppy about it I'd have to overlap and even then it might get to be a little bit sloppy looking but we will discuss overlapping in another video as you can see I am not the most skilled in the world at this particular style because I move on to the puffier form and that's where I like to live my life it's still a very handy skill to have and I intend on practicing it a lot more in upcoming months if you would like some practice sheets where I basically just give you something to copy over and over again while you get that smooth situation going I've got worksheets for you that have practice stuff on them and they will be available in the llamas love lettering facebook group go on in there search the files you'll find them in there under lll 2.9 we're going to be doing lowercase letters next week but if there's something besides block letters bubble letters that you'd like to see let me know in the comments we are going to be covering shading drop shadowing all that good stuff in upcoming weeks this is going to be the longest fucking season you've ever even imagined thank you so much for watching subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you next time